Hi students, welcome to E. Padasala. I. P. Sudha, working as assistant professor in Amman Arts and Science College, E. Road. Now we will see the topic features of landscape garden and gardening plants. Now we will see the introduction. Growing ornamental plants to decorate indoor and outdoor area is called landscape gardening. Gardening is one of the most important division in horticulture. Landscape garden is a place where ornamental plant plants are grown with non-living elements mainly for recreation. Landscape garden is a planned place where people can relax and enjoy. Garden is created both natural and man-made materials. A garden helps us to maintain clean and beautiful surroundings and also gives us a regular exercise. Foliage plants, flowering annuals, biennials, perennials, climbers, succulents, cacti, palms, ferns, etc. are grown in the gardens to, get, to have a good scenery in these places. Gardening improves the aesthetic value of the locations. The common form of garden are public gardens, fruit garden, vegetable garden and residential garden. Among all of these, landscape garden increase the peace, beauty of the surroundings. Now we will see about the objectives of landscape garden. Landscape facilitate to gain precious knowledge regarding materials, practices, planning of garden etc. To understand the importance of plants in landscape gardening. The next objective is to learn the principles of landscape gardening, have a knowledge regarding different garden elements and adornments. Then we will see the planning a landscape garden. While planning a landscape garden, the following points should be taken into consideration. First, climatic consideration, then type of soil, then design style, then care and maintenance. Then first is climatic consideration. The annual rainfall, temperature, frost, etc. should be considered while making a design of gardens. City is usually warmer and more sheltered all year round than the rural areas. Coastal regions are also vulnerable to salt laden winds, so suitable plants should be selected according to the general climate of the areas. Soil consideration Plant growth essentially depends on soil type, drainage, soil texture and soil pH. Therefore, the soil should be surveyed properly before choosing the plants to grow in these areas. Then third one is design consideration. While designing a garden, its immediate surrounding is considered rather than in isolation. A more detailed plan may be drawn showing good and bad views, the direction of prevailing winds and shelter. If there is frequent noise, it should be checked by growing evergreen trees along the margin of the garden. The garden should be viewed from the street or from the front door of the house. The existing area should be minimum but enriched with plants. Foundation areas should be alerted for attractive shrubs and herbaceous perennials because these are received primary attention of viewers. Outdoor living areas should be away from the garden, especially on either side of the house. They should be separated from the garden by erecting fences or shrubs. Then fourth one is maintenance considerations. All gardens, even if informal or wild, need some care and attention to keep them in good conditions. Before deciding on a design, be realistic about the manpower required for making the garden. Choose the plants that need less care. Then in South India, home landscape are planned to provide enough shade to the homelands because light intensity is high in these areas. Further, the homeland is judicially assigned for outdoor living, vehicle parking, children's play and others to avoid interference of the garden area. Separate areas are also alerted for growing scarred flowers, vegetable gardening and flowers for personal decorations. Then planting operations. Before planting start, the planting operation involves the following steps. First, the hedges and edges are planted in linear systems. Trees are planted in square system or rectangular system or hexagonal or diagonal or triangular systems. Borders are grown along the sides of the footpaths. Arches is erected at the entrance of the garden. Percolas are created over the footpath. Rockery is created at an elevated places. Shrubs, flower beds and lawns are grown at suitable location in the garden. Climbers and creepers are planted near the walls, pillars, arches and percolas and allowed to grow over them. A greenhouse is constructed in a suitable location in the garden. Sangan garden is established in natural depression. 
water garden is also established in water pools trophy is made on slopes ground forms structures and plants should be organized into a pleasing composition shade trees should be planted in suitable places to protect shade loving plants in the garden then we will see about the styles of landscape garden basically there are two styles one is formal style second one is informal style the formal style of garden the elements are arranged in a very formal way this is also called as mogul style formal garden is a perfect symmetry in the designs the main features of the formal garden are the layout of symmetry and roads cut at right angle enclosures or boundary around the garden flower beds are geometric design fountain pools cascade are main elements the seasonal flower beds are in geometrical pattern the flowers include jasmine carnation hollyhocks etc pardari is the important features in formal garden that is it is a arbor like stone and masonry with a roof and raised platform for sitting these gardens are created around tomb or mosque the main disadvantages of formal garden is it is only suitable for government and large buildings present day home garden are only in the frontage of the house then informal style the second style is informal this is also called as british style of landscape garden the elements are arranged in very informal way there is no symmetry in anywhere in the formal style also there is no repetition elements like umbrellas seats cascade rockery waterfall etc are used the features are it is natural asymmetric irregular arrangement of water bodies have no trimmed plants or the borders the paths are curved or wavy waterfalls lakes rocks cuts and umbrellas are scattered no restriction in the arrangement of garden elements and ornaments features of landscape garden so in the landscape garden may have the following features lawn shrubs and shrubberies climbers and creepers trees flower beds and borders ornamental hedges drives roads walks and paths carpet beds tofery trophy fern and fernery sunken garden garden adornments first feature is the lawn a lawn is the inseparable part of a good home garden it provide a natural setting for a growing flower flowers and shrubs like a canvas for a painting a picture lawn is a permanent picture in both formal and informal garden shape of the lawn may be regular or irregular the most popular regular shape is rectangular and irregular shape unequal in length and breadth the grass planted in the garden should be thick and good green color without any weeds lawn is an important features of garden without lawn the garden is incomplete a lawn is an area of closely cut grasses in the garden the grasses are very short in size and longer grasses are cut by the help of the lawn movers hence the lawn referred to as green carpet lawn helps to increase the beauty of the garden shrubs trees flower beds and borders form the suitable background of the lawn methods of lawn making the common methods of making lawns are dipping grass root sowing seeds turfing for making lawn the following points should be taken into consideration selection of site preparation of soil raising of grass mowing watering weeding top dressing tree planting etc grasses useful for land the main grasses mainly used for making lawns are hariyali buffalo grass chain grass blue grass japan grass dwarf grass dwarf bermuda grass kenya grass korean grasses and hybrid bermuda grasses nowadays synthetic lawn also made from synthetic fibers is used that is called the synthetic lawn is called as astroturf 
then second one is shrub and shrubberies shrubs offer a wide variety of color shape size and adaptability a shrub like a tree may be grown as focus if attention in a lawn or rockery shrubs are much branched woody perennials which have no central trunk shrubs are smaller than trees branches are grown in all sides and cover the center portion of the plants Shrubs are planted in the, at the corner of the garden and trimmed at regular interval to a particular height. They also form borders of food paths. With more than two kinds of shrubs, such as shrub growth, is called as shrubbery or shrub borders. Dense foliage and bright colored flower shrubs are created charming, excellent beauty to landscape garden. The shrubs may be evergreen or deciduous. The important shrubs used are. Aralia elegantissima, Aralia fabrica, Manorangidum, Balloon Plant, Umbrella Plant, Cassia alata, Cap Jasmine, Mayflower. Shrubs are always resistant to pests and diseases. Then third one is Climbers and Creepers. Climbers and Creepers are an essential part of the garden designing. Climbers may be annual like Morning Glory or Canary Creeper or perennial like Bohanvilla or Rampler Roses. Climbers and creepers are used to grow against over walls, trellises, arches, pergolas, arbor, pillars or large trees. These are light or heavy depending on its woody nature. They spread over a structure or land by their rootlets, hooks, tendrils, etc. Pretty ornamental climbers and creepers display their dazzling beauty while blooming. They may be shady or semi shady location or for sunny locations. A combination of climbers blooming successively or simultaneously can create a delightful effect. Climbers provide a beautiful backdrop for the water garden. Climbers are an excellent cover material and acts as the insulator for the greenhouses. The following ornamental climbers and creepers are suitable for growing in landscape garden are Bignomaceae, Adamanta, Polygonaceae, Touchman's Pipe, Paper Flower or Bohenvilla, Railway Creeper, different species of Jasmine, Passion flower, purple rot, rangoon creeper, money plant, goose food plant. Layering, root or stem cutting are the propagation methods for cultivating climbers and creepers. Uses of climbers, morning glory and sweet pea are grown in pot culture. Some polyus climbers suitable for indoor decoration. Some climbers are grown over the fences and greenhouses to reduce the heat and light. Heavy climbers are spread over the arches, pergolas and trees. Then next we will see about the trees. Trees are larger than shrubs and give mass effect and beautiful look. It is the framework of the garden. Trees are grown with large woody plants with central trunk. Trees are ideal for picnic ground in large public garden. Trees provide adequate shade to the garden. Mainly trophy is formed under the trees. Arboriculture means cultivation of trees. Trees protect the garden from the outside noise and give perspective beauty. Trees are cultivated by seeds or cuttings or by layerings. Flowering trees suitable for landscape gardening are silver wattle, Golden Sour, Trivedi, Leguminaceous or Queen of Flowering Trees, Pink Sour, Cannon Ball Tree, Kulmoka, Indian Coral Tree, Badminton Ball Tree, Copper Sealed Tree, Indian Tulip Trees. Benefits of Trees It gives much beauty to the areas, enjoyable features to the garden, maintain ecological balance, reduce noise and air pollution, Sometimes it provides shelter, give majestic look and greening the surroundings. Then we will see about the flower beds and borders. Dense growth of herbaceous annuals producing beautiful flowers in a small compartment is called flower bed. It looks like a flower carpet. Flower beds are created along with the foundation of building and sites of paths leading to entrance. Narrow flower beds with more length than the width are called borders. Borders are usually created by planting heterogeneous plants. Borders are created by using herbaceous plants means herbaceous border, syrups means syrup border, two or more spices means it is called as mixed border. 
The important plants suitable for flowering beds are Cosmos, Posia, Ginea, Ibris, Viola, Fomia, Petunia, Asylum, Pilax. Then we will see about the ornamental hedges. A row of syrups planted close together to form a boundary for a field or garden is hedge. It is usually enclosed a particular part of or whole of the garden. Internal hedges are also planted inside the garden with beautiful foliage plants. The height of the hedge is normally 50 cm to 60 cm. Pruning is done periodically to maintain equal height. Hedges are used in the garden for dividing bed, borders, etc. from roads, walks and paths. Plants suitable for hedges are Casiruna, Polyelthia, Lanthana, Toronto, Aralia. Then we will see about drives, roads, walks and paths. Drives or roads are an important part of the garden which protect garden plants from food path. Drives should have link from one part to another part. Brick, gravel, rock, stone, concrete timber, bitumen, glass, metal are used for constructing drives. Sometimes the interspace can be planted with ground spread. Path defines the passage in the landscape created. Paths may be paved or unpaved. Paving materials are used to reduce the demerits of mud and dust. Paths facilitate easy circulation. Various designs pattern of pathing materials are used to create beautiful and charming effect of the garden. Paving materials could be natural or man-made. Man-made paving materials are available in various colors and textures. Stone, brick, concrete, stacked stones, pebbles, marbles are used as paving materials. In formal garden, irregular shaped flat stones or tiles are used for paving. This is called as grassy path. Then we will discuss about carpet beds. Dense growth of Gerbaceous plants which are trimmed frequently to have some designs or letter is called carpet beds. Plants with attractive foliage are some more suitable for carpet beds than flowering ones. Carpet beds are created mostly in large public garden. Maintenance is very difficult. The plants are always trimming and not allowing them to overgrow. Verbenae or Urantra are used to form sudden designs or letters of all the beds. Then we will see about the rockery. Gardens established in areas where the soil is few millimeters in thickness and rocks is exposed at many places are called as rock gardens. Other name of rock garden is rockery or alpine garden. Rocks, stones and boulders are the main characteristic features of rock garden. Large open space or under the shade of the tree is suitable for rock garden. Irregular sizes for large stones are dumped with required peaks and slopes on all sides. Then the gap between stalks are filled with cultivated soil. Different variety of attractive plants are grown in the soil. Syrups, herbaceous plants, creepers, ferns, cacti and succulents are some of the plants suitable for rockery garden. Construction of fountain at one peak and the shallow pool with beautiful water loving plants may include additional beauty to the rock garden. Then care and maintenance of rock garden. Thinning should be done periodically. Weeding should be done manually. Manuring and uh, fertilizing adder regularly. Proper water system should be followed. Diseased leaves are removed immediately. Frequently removed dead leaves and shoots. Japanese rock garden are also known as gen garden have the special feature like moss, prune trees, bushes, waterfall and very few plants. Tophiri. Tophiri is a plant which trimmed and clipped into the ornamental shape such as cone, bird or animals. Shrubs with bushy habits are suitable for tophiri work. Casiruna, cupresses and bougainville etc are the suitable for tophiri work. These syrups withstand frequent trimming and bending to form definite shapes. Then trophy. Arrangement of watered plants in the garden is known as trophy. Usually attractive foliage and flowers are placed around the trees or the large object or statues. Trophy emphasizes the particular object or statue in beautiful way. Potted plants are arranged in different tire around the statues. Flowering animals or herbaceous perennials are suitable for trophy arrangements. Then we will see about the fern and fernery. Fern are non-flowering vascular plants growing in moist shady terrestrial habitats. Ferns comprises a variety, very large family of ma many species. Ferns have beautiful foliage and flowers and not exposed to direct sun. There are excellent house plants. Mostly ferns are grown in greenhouse or fernery. A place where ferns are placed and maintained is called as fernery. A fernery have adequate shade, humidity and temperature. Sometimes to maintain temperature, creepers are grown over the roof of the fernery. Ferns are propagated by means of division of rhizomes or spores. Most common Indian ferns are maiden hair fern, tree fern, 
birds nest fern mother fern rabbit's fern climbing fern turbul ferns then we will see the palms palms are mostly tropical plants and thrive well in light sandy soil and warm humid place palms are suitable for verandas staircase or shaded portion of the garden they may have excellent pot plants plants can be propagated from seed or root or division or suckers palms are a great ornamental value as foliage plants generally the flowers are not showy fan leaved or feather leaved palms are generally do groups planted in the landscape garden traveler palm is a very famous palm nowadays occupies most of the garden then we will see about the cacti and succulents cacti and succulents are breath taking beauty which adds aesthetic value to the surroundings plants with fleshy stems and leaves are called succulents these are xerophytic plants that can withstand rough conditions flowers of succulents are very attractive and appear in wide range of color waxy coat various shapes and spines cacti succulents are mainly cultivated in pots pots made of wood mud or galvanized metal are used for pot culture these are filled with sand or vermiculite then succulents are planted in the pot after establishments the pot are kept under the shaded places various cacti and succulents used in gardening are star of bethlehem zygo cactus thanksgiving cactus orchid cactus easter cactus then we will see about the sangan garden garden created by use of natural depression within the garden is known as sangan garden around the sangan garden series of terraces are constructed over the terrace the potted plants are kept to enhance the beauty there is a small pool or fountain at the bottom then we will see about the garden adornments garden adornments are accessories used to create the additional beauty of the existing one garden adornments are non living one garden adornments are listed below fountain statues garden seats ornamental pots and pillars arches and pergolas trellises hanging baskets tubs vases and urns usually garden adornments are used as a basic support to plants to spread some adornments are useful for people to fit relax and sleep example seats and benches attractive statues are used to create trophy of the garden fountain brings natural look to the garden so from the conclusion garden add to the quality of life and gardening is an absorbing pursuit author lloyd says gardening is one of the those creative activities that produce an enjoyable sensation of enjoyment gardening is a humanizing occupation in india we are fortunate to possess one of the richest floras on this earth so different plants are grown in the garden with support of some non living elements the outdoor and indoor gardens are used to the above garden features to enhance the beauty of the surroundings the living and non living elements can fulfill the whole beauty of the landscape garden